All right, guys, here we go again. My name is Ricky Simo. Here we go with Doki Doki Literature Club. Let's load the game and let's start off where we're at. Hey, you can skip button to fast forward through text you already read. Okay. Phew. I guess that's everyone. I glanced around the room. That was a little more stressful than I expected or anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club. This is a literature club, after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As I read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Uh, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing! Natsuki dismissively, re dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have... <laughs> I don't know if I want to do the voices. You mean you have, to, you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple suggestions. Hmm. <laughs> if I was looking for suggestions, I would have I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people, which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it. And Rikisimo did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some of my suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect to change anytime soon unless, of course, I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. No! <laughs> and Rikisimo liked my poem too, you know. Even He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh, didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Eh? That's not what I... Uh, you're, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Rikisimo appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh? How do you know you didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Yeah! <laughs> um, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one who boob magically grew a size bigger as soon as the kissing started showing up. What? I wasn't the one who boob magically grew a size bigger as soon as the kissing started showing up. Ha 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 ha! Natsuki! Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you! I, I don't like fighting, guys! Oh, wrong voice. <laughs> Suddenly, both girls turned toward, turn towards me as if they noticed. They just noticed I was standing there. Rikishima! She, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true! She started it! If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place! What's the point in making your poems all com convoluted for no, no reason? <laughs> I mean, I should just jump out of the reader and not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Rikishima. Well, wait. There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and, and meaning them most effectively. Avoiding them is not unnecessarily limiting yourself. It's also a waste. Wait, it's also- wait, what? You understand that, right, Rikishima? Um... Well? Eh... How did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. But whomever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. Oh no! I honestly don't know. Ah, man! 
Should I just put help me Sayori? I'm gonna put that. Not thinking that's at me dying, drying up any words I had in my mouth. So instead I turn to Yuri. Yuri? Uh oh. But Yuri's expression was so defenseless that I can't bring myself to say anything to her. Sayori! Eh? Yeah? Everyone's fighting is making Sayori uncomfortable. How can the two of you keep fighting when you know you're making your friend feel like this? My kissy man. Well, that's her problem. This isn't about her. I I agree. It's unfair for others to interject their own feelings into our conflict. Yeah, unless they always wants to tell Yuri what a stuck-up jerk she's being. <laughs> she would never. It's your immaturity that made her upset in the first place. Excuse me. <laughs> Are you listening to yourself? This is exactly why. Exactly why nobody likes... Stop! Huh? <laughs> Natsuki! Yuri! You guys are my friends! I just want everyone to get along and be happy. My friends are wonderful people. And I love them because of the differences. Natsuki's poems? They're amazing because they give us so many feelings with just a few words. And Yuri's poems are amazing because they paint a beautiful picture in your head. Everyone's so talented. So why are we fighting? Be because... Well, also, Natsuki's cute, and there's nothing wrong with that. And Yuri's boobs are the same as they always were. <laughs> Big and beautiful. <laughs> so people that made this game were kind of perverted. Then again, it's kind of like those games where you know you talk to a bunch of girls. Sayori. Sayori stands triumphantly. Monica stands behind her with a bewildered expression. I'll make some. Oh wait, I'll make some tea. Yuri rushes off. Natsuki sits down with a blank expression on her face, staring at nothing. So this is why Sayori is vice president. I whisper to Monica. She nods in return. To be honest, I might come off as a good leader and I can organize things, but I'm not very good with people. I couldn't even bring myself to interject. As president, that kind of that's kind of embarrassing of me. <laughs> nah, it's not like I can blame you. I wasn't able to say anything either. Well, I guess that just means Sayori's amazing in her own ways, isn't she? You could say that. She might be an airhead, but Sayori is weirdly suspicious that she knows exactly what she's doing. I see. Take good care of her, okay? I would hate to see her get herself... I would hate to see her get herself hurt. Oh, I was right. That makes two of us. You can count on me. Monica smiles sweetly at me, causing my stomach to nod. Such a genuine person really does make a good president, regardless of what she says. If only I could get the chance to talk to her a little more. Okay, oh wait. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How do you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was alright. Well, mostly. Oh, I didn't even read it in their thing. Whatever. Casey, but how about you? Yeah, I did the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Ask them. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. Maybe you learn something from your friends too. So your poems will turn out even better. Uh, I think to myself, I did learn a little bit more about what kinds of poems everyone likes. If there's any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. And I'll do myself the newfound determination with newfound determination. But Casey, Beth! Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go! <laughs> See, I beams at me. Surely it has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. Can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Very nice. Sayori! What about about what happened earlier? Hey, what do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. That's really the first time I've seen a fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You know, you don't hate them, do you? No, no, I don't hate them. It's a part of your opinion, that's all. I can see why they make good friends with you. Yeah. You know what, Rikisimo? I mean, you know Rikisimo. It's nice to, to get to the. It's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. <laughs> but I think seeing you get along with everyone what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes it too. That's. <laughs> Every day is gonna be so much fun. Sigh. Looks like Ari doesn't caught into the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? 
We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. Is he trying to get with them? I pet Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an intentional monologue sometimes. Okay! Yeah, let's do this. Wait, who said this? Alright, let's see. Let's try to make uh, a Yuri also... What? Why did you like Dark? Yeah, see, uh... Oh, god damn it. Oh, god damn it! <laughs> Why do you like shame? Why do you like death? Huh? You don't even make any damn sense. What? Why are you pain? <laughs> I don't... There we go. Why do you like misfortune? De why do you like defeat? I was trying to get Yuri. I thought Yuri liked that stuff. Man, what? It doesn't even... Hey, Casey, bye. Yo, I mean, yo, Sayori. <laughs> Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still... I'm just still not used to being in the club. You being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things like... The simple things with you, anyway. Speaking of which... I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No, thanks. Eh? That, that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh, uh, hey. Why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Ah! <laughs> Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets the contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not... Oh, that's not fair! How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have brought, bought a snack before coming to the club. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. Look at her mouth! <laughs> but there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so, that only leaves the one option. Ah! I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? Oh, it's me. Eh? <laughs> I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in, is in her book as always. Aha! Or ah, I don't know. I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri! Tell the key mother let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mysterious little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Uh... Did I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed in my book. Eh... I really like what you speak in mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You're right, though. I did something bad, and I have to accept the revolution. Re retribution That! Still coming from you, Sayori. Guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? Hey, <laughs> brother, yeah! Don't let her... F I mean, don't let her fool you. So I know exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but, you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick that Suki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. Hey, 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 I know I'm going smack Sayori in the face and tumbles onto her desk. Ow, what was... Eh? A, a cookie. Sure enough, it's a gigantic cookie wrapped in plastic. So he glances around. Is this a miracle? Because I paid my restitution. <laughs> Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. 
It was just, I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction though. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. She already hugs a cookie. <laughs> Jeez, just eat it. Sierra already tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Hmm? Sierra suddenly claps her hand over her mouth. I bit my tongue. <laughs> You're going through a lot of the wood and just that <laughs> black. You're going through a lot over just one cookie. And Suki takes a bite of her own cookie. Hey, yours looks really good too, Suki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why well, didn't they give you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. Hehehehe. <laughs> Sarah gets out of her seat and goes behind Atsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, uh, jeez. <laughs> I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in hand, Atsuki. Oh, Atsuki reaches out to nudge Sayori off her. Um, Sarah suddenly leans down and takes a bite on Atsuki's cookie. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Did you just seriously do that? <laughs> Mouth full, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Yeah? Atsuki glances around. Monica is in the club room. Ah, uh, where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about be her being late today? Not me. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm, that's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> that's true. Excuse me! Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm... I'm super sorry. Oh, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose a club over a boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. The boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Eh, uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Eh, uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. Well, you would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't really. I just started recently. I always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I also like, I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Rikisima. Monica smiles sweetly. Uh, I didn't need any pressure or anything like that. Haha, <laughs> don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I chose to leave out Sayori Mr. Viz escapade. I'm sure Atsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. Looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book. And Atsuki disappeared into the closet. Rikisibo, Rikisibo! Sayori suddenly comes up to me. I'm gonna get some supplies from another classroom. Wanna come with me? Supplies? What for? Oh, you know, the festival's coming up. Me and Monica were gonna make some posters and stuff. So I need to go find some crayons and markers and glue sticks. Ah, I see. Sure, I'll go with you. Yay! Okay, Monica, we'll be back soon. Uh, are you going to Rikisimo to get supplies? You don't need to trouble yourself. I'd be happy to go with him. Ah, but I wanted to go. It's so much fun exploring empty classrooms and stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. It was just a suggestion. See if you can find poster poster paper too, okay? Okay! Ready to Rikisimo? Yep, let's go. Sayori and I exit the club room. I follow behind as Sayori hums and skips around the hallway. Honestly, I feels like I'm taking a kid to a mall or something. 
Sorry if I played you in the simplest thing sometimes. Hey, Sayori. What are you actually doing for the festival anyway? I'm not sure how you would make an event out of literature. <laughs> me and Monica pulled it. Wait, me and Monica have, planned it, have it all planned out. <laughs> don't worry, don't. Wait, don't you worry. Jesus. Is that so? Yep. We're gonna do a poetry performance. Performance? Of what kind? Well, everyone's gonna take turns on stage and recite their favorite poem. Ah, that sounds kind of dull. Mikisimo! You're not thinking about it the right way at all. It's not just about reading poems, it's about performing them. Like you say the lines of a poem like, Between my feet, the last remaining flower beckons to me. I twist the stem, freeing it from its clinging roots. Carelessly, the final joyous moment between my fingers. But to what ends have I summoned this joy? For now, when I look in every direction, the once prosperous field before me is but a barren wasteland. Like that! <laughs> okay. Siri? How do I put this? I'm sure it's just me, but it's impossible for me to take you seriously when you talk like that. Eh! Hey, you meanie! I'm working super hard on this, you know! I know, I know! I just meant that it's pretty an ordinary contrast to your cute self. I <laughs> don't say that to Bessie, but I guess that means I'm doing a good job. Yeah, I guess so. Hey, I'm so excited. The festival's going to be so much fun. They already spin itself around the hallway again. Hey, Casey, while the classroom's over here, it's empty. Let's begin the mission. The mission, eh? It's been a long time since I spent time with Sayori like this. But in the end, she hasn't changed one bit. She's nothing but a ball of sunshine drawing happy vibes from the world around her. It's a pretty nostalgic feeling for me. As the years went by, I be began to hold myself up in my room more and more. So going on adventuring, so going on adventuring with Sierra brings about a special sort of feeling I forgot I had in me. The two of us enter the classroom. Sierra heads straight to the closet, and I follow. Let's see what we have in here. Crayon. Sierra pulls a box full of crayons off the shelf. They're the best brand too. They're kind of dirty though. Sierra is pulling various crayons out of the box, reading the colored names. All right, that's one down. Don't get distracted, we still need to find... Wait, I'm looking for my favorite color! Fine, fine. Then at least move aside so I can look for the poster paper. Sorry guys, I stretched for a little while. Ah, I dropped one by accident! Smack! Yeah. Sarah bends over and smacks her forehead right onto the shelf. She falls to the floor and the crayons fall all over her lap. Ow, 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 <laughs> You okay? My forehead! Sarah clutches clutches her forehead. Jeez, Sayori. That's just like you, isn't it? Come on, let me see. The Sayori sitting on the floor, grab her by her waist and pull her out of the closet. You need to move your hands, Sayori. But it hurts! Just do it for a second. Sayori slowly releases her hands from her forehead. I gently brush her bangs to the side. Ow! Oh, she changed expression. Sorry. There's a huge red mark on the center of her forehead. A bump is starting to form as well. Man, that's gonna swell up. I should find you some ice. Rikisima? Where would I even find ice around this time? I guess a cold drink would do. You don't have to. I'm fine with looking like a unicorn. Even wincing from the pain, Sayori makes a silly joke. <laughs> She's smiling. Aw, poor Sayori. Uh, what are you saying? I'll be right back, okay? Okay. I pat Sayori on the shoulder and run into the hallway. I look at the nearest vending machine. What should I get? Doesn't really matter since it'll be used as an ice pack rather than to drink. But I know Sayori likes apple juice if I purchase that one. In just a moment, I'm already, I'm already returning to the classroom where I left Sayori. She has one palm on her forehead and is using the other hand to clumsily, clumsily, clumsily scoop crayons back into the box. At least they were already in the rock spots before I spilled them. Sayori, here. I hand Sayori the bottle of apple juice. <laughs> She actually got it on the, on the thing. It's nice and cold. Sarah opens the cap and starts drinking from it. Sarah, what are you doing? It's for your forehead, idiot. Ah, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> How hard did you hit your head? Sarah places the bottle against the bump on her head. It stings. Oh, wait. It stings! Just bear with it. It'll feel better soon. Looks like you cleaned up most of the crayons, so that's good. Hey, Rikisimo. This kind of reminds me of growing up, doesn't it? Uh, what do you mean? You know, we used to play outside all the time. I'd always try to keep up with you. You were kind of oblivious in some ways. 
Like, I usually fell behind. I had trouble climbing on things you did. But sometimes when I try to do things I couldn't, I would get myself hurt. I'd fall and scrape myself and get a bump. And I would start crying really loud. <laughs> <laughs> and you would rush over as quick as you could. You would try really hard to get me to stop crying. It's weird that she blinks. It's so weird that that thing is blinking. I don't know why. It's almost like... It's almost like a, like a mannequin type of thing. Type of idea to me. Like, it's not that picture's not supposed to move. It was almost like you blamed yourself and were afraid of getting in trouble if someone found out. Even though it really wasn't your fault at all, you know? Did I really do that? Yeah, you don't remember? Come to think of it, maybe I do remember a bit. Guess I always was so I was always so focused on my games that I didn't pay attention enough to you. Aww. So in a way it was my fault. Kinda like this time too. If I wasn't rushing you to the out of the closet, you probably wouldn't have hit your head. Kissima, I don't think you realize it, but you're always thinking about other people. Even after all these years, you're rushing to help me even though I'm just being clumsy. You're really a sweetheart. D don't call me that. And I don't really do this kind of thing all the time. I guess when it comes to you, it just feels natural. Before I even know, I'm treating you like that. But I guess what happens when, you're, when you've been friends for so long. Really? Maybe you're right. Akisimo, I'm so glad that nothing's changed between us. Do you think it'll be like this forever? Forever? If I'm honest to myself, there's no telling where we'll end up for college or after that. So it wouldn't be fair for me to make any promises. But, well, I hope so. It's been this long already, right? I can't imagine you ever changing, so my hopes are up. I'm so happy. Sarah has a whimsical expression in her eye. We remain silent for a moment. She's so silly and clumsy on the outside that that when I see her deep in thought like this, it makes me not want to disturb her. I guess we should go back. I don't want to worry about... Oh, wait. I don't want... I don't want to worry, Monica, you know? Good luck with that. She's going to see your forehead either way. Not if I hide, hide it under my bangs. <laughs> Sorry, hops to her feet. Ah! She goes to the forehead again. Don't set out so fast after hurting yourself. Eh. Well, I guess it's too late now. Anyway, let's go. I follow Sayori out of the classroom. Sayori plays with their bangs to try to hide the bump, but without much success. In a moment, we make it back to the club room. Ah, you're back! Good timing. I was just about ready to start with sharing our poems. Eh, yeah, Sayori, your forehead. She's fine. Don't worry about it. I was playing with the crayons and smacked my forehead onto the shelf. <laughs> well, anyway, were you able to find everything we needed? Uh huh, I have it right. Eh? Sarah finally glances around herself. I forgot all the stuff! Calm down, Sayori. I have it all right here. I found the poster paper, too. <laughs> oh, wait, that's Monica. <laughs> Sounds like you ended up doing all the work for Kisimo. Ah, uh, well, Sayori... I felt like I come up with an excuse for Sayori. I made it an adventure! Yeah, that. <laughs> okay, okay. In any case, good work. I'll start working on the posters tonight. Me too! Okay, everyone. Are you ready to share your poems? Guess I should grab mine. For making sure the cram box is closely closed tightly, I return my seat. Or to my seat. Does it really matter who I show it to? I'm going to show it to Sayori first. Rikisame, I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. Yeah, I'm not hiding anything. But your poems are so good. Yesterday's and this one too. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean, you're really the only one who feels that way, so... Eh? No way! Not even Natsuki? I guess Natsuki is least likely to admit how much she likes something. But I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Eh? Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> Stop thinking weird things, idiot. I just admit that you're really, you're a really expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking! Let uh, let's not talk about that. 
<laughs> Why doesn't he like Sayori? I don't get it. So yeah, I guess what I'm saying is that I can feel more feelings through you than I can through myself. We have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting me for getting in my business all the time. Eh? I don't know if I understand. Sigh. You never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Sayori? I know when it says sigh, I'm supposed to sigh, but I always read it. I don't know. <laughs> I pat Sayori's head. <laughs> hey! I'm not that kid, you know. Oh, I'm not a kid, you know. Are you sure about that? Maybe. Sayori looks fiddling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, Kisima. Will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Huh? Why? Because, well, it's the first time you've written something for me. <laughs> I wonder what that means. Two exclamation points. Sarah, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. <laughs> so, are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we get home. Really? Stop! Ha <laughs> I broke my pencil. Why did I read it like that? Sarah hastily bends down to pick up the piece that she dropped. But being an attentive or surrounded, she bumps right into me. So sorry! It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sorry clutches the desk beside her to support herself, knees shaking. I'm a little clumsy today. <laughs> Let's sit down, Sayori. Yeah! I got Sayori's arm and help her to sit at her desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Huh? Oh, sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. Okay, here we go. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's a secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time wasted. Oh, no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me a lot of friends. Each bottle of starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done, I open up and come in my dreams. And in come my dreams. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I finally pull them from the shelf, one after the other. Holding them out to each and every friend. Each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts. In shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends. My friends who weren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading something, but all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Wow. I don't know what that entails, but... It's not like she's burying... No, I don't know about burying her... It's not like she's trying to bury her sad thoughts with happy thoughts? No, I don't know. I don't know how to interpret that. I need to read it again. Sarah, did you really write this? Of course I did! I didn't tell you yesterday I was going to write a... Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm not... I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good. So you should be proud of it. Ah, <sighs> oh, thanks! I feel like, I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You got pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. <laughs> don't get ahead of yourself. Sorry I always had a, bit of, had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this one is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Okay. Alright. Next, Netsuka. I accidentally put a lot of... I accidentally gave her a lot of points. Hmm. 
Well, it's not terrible, but it's pretty disappointing after the last one. Then again, if this one was good as the last one, I would be completely pissed. Well, I guess I want to try something a little different this time. Fair enough, you're still new to this, so I wouldn't expect you to find your style right away. Come think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sally's poem from yesterday. Eh, uh, you think so? Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Siri has a type? Wait, Siri has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how could someone so uh, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Uh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she probably would just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say we... We each take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Alright, here we go. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried to let her touch me. She likes spiders so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to, to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if she doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm going to tell everyone. <laughs> okay. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, oh, anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I thought I'd have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree to the subject of the poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course, it's all about how everyone thinks my... Wait, it's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It could be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid of. People find out they make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for lacking weird things. We're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless it's a good message to from it. Wait, take away from it. Like conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow too, so look forward to it. Alright, I'll be right back. Oh my god, I'm tired. Wake up. Alright, I'm back. Sorry guys, I'm so tired right now. I'm so tired. I don't know why. I didn't really sleep much, I guess. So I was trying to wake myself up. Let's see what you've written for today. Hmm. Well done, Rikisimo. Your skills are already improving. Really? Thanks, Yuri. Coming from you, that means a lot. Eh, it's, it's nothing. I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers. I know you're new to this, so don't worry so much if it feels like you can't get your poem to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid of... Wait, you don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings. And write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see into your mind. It's very, it's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's certainly interesting. Wait, that's, that's a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me your poem. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of the night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as, as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread. My, subconsci my subconscious well aware of the consequences. 
Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its place, its phase, and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions into a newly satisfied animal. Onto the newly satisfied animal? The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I ba brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows it shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Parlorian? Parlovian? Parlorian? I don't know. Conditioning. The slice of bread. Oh, par Pavlon Pavlovian. I know what I know what they, they're talking about. I slice the bread and I feel my I feel myself again. I feed myself again. I don't like that. She's having fun with a knife like that. <laughs> I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style, using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I want to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Huh? That's funny. Hmm? Did not Suki also write something about that? About something being ridiculed for a strange interest? Eh? She did? Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She She's right. Uh, I mean, does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have that in common. That's, well, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Ah, please don't tell her I said that. Ah, uh, don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay, well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I'd probably hate myself. I, I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. Yay! Let's show it to Monica! Hi again, Rikissimo! How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad, I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Ah, uh, I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Wanna share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. Give my poem to, I give my poem to Monica. Alright! It's pretty good! It makes me think of Sayori like the other one that you wrote. You two are like the dynamic duo. <laughs> That's kind of exaggerating it. Yeah, probably. But you do spend a lot of time with her, even in this club, don't you? Then again, I don't blame you for being a little shy. I, I'm not shy, it's just... <laughs> I'm just teasing. I know there's a bit more time to make friends with everyone. But you're and Asuki are super interesting people, so don't be afraid to give them their share of time. And you can talk to me every now and then, too. I'm not, like, unapproachable or anything, am I? Uh, no, it's something like that. I'm just getting used to being here, that's all. Yeah, I'm sorry about putting pressure on you or something. I really didn't mean it like that. No, don't worry. I get what you're saying. Well, alright. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating, waveform, speaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless, an endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Huh? Hmm. Seems more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> It's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just kind of the thing i never really seen before, I guess. Kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. 
Still hard for me to tell what it's, what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a different decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something, or when something unexpected ha may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, crap. Oh, yeah, that's right. They're self -aware. She's self-aware. She's the one that's self-aware, isn't she? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. I know somebody's self-aware in this game. And I have a good feeling it's Monica. I literally don't know much about this game, guys. <laughs> I know you guys are probably like, this guy has to know, but I literally never watched... Anybody play this game? I'm not. I'm not good with listening to people talk the whole time. Okay, everyone, we're all done reading each other's poems, right? Has something extra, extra planned today, so everyone could come sit at the front room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Uh, do we really have to? Do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sarah has been working on posters and I designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but doesn't that, that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? Puh. Uh, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sarah's putting it all, all, putting it all, wait, putting it on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sarah, oh, Sarah, who's been coloring a poster, holds, up, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't. You didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head, her head in fear. Guys! No, Sayori. Oh, I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's all to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room of full, a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of over overlooked that, so I'm sorry. But I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for that for the fate of this club. If we start the event each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right, and it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share with that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? You kn I know you do. I know we all do. And if it all takes... If it all takes, wait, and if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, <clears throat> then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me with no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get these new members. The least we can do is help them, a lot, help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Suki doesn't have, have any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over. Wait, get it over with? All right. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. 
Uh, I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone! You're the best, Yuri! This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. It'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No, no, no way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of a club, how do you expect to do this in front of strangers? Oh, no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to, to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. I swear she moved. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing, this, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes res 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 recitation? recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica! <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to get to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Yuri? Uh, I'll go next. What? Yuri's fired up. Wait, Yuri's fired up all of a sudden? Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. <clears throat> this poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it? You can do it, Sayori! Or Yuri! <laughs> It's, it's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in, putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her, as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save this situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward and we give Yuri the rec recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught, off, caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, guess I'm next in. Sarah hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks up to the podium. This one's called my meadow. Ah, ah, ha, ha. Sorry, I giggled. <laughs> Say, Yuri? It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Uh, try to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you were saying it to yourself like in front of a mirror in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out of the come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Sarah begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to re reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. Hey, <laughs> even Rikishima liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Yeah, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where the, that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's why I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. Let me go before Rikishima. Not like I compare you to compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Rikishima. Oh wait, 
Might as well never keep my lower. Everyone stares a little before I have to do it. Natsuki! It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll have to go with my go with what I wrote for today. I set up and step in, step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. So I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that will improve over time though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then, that's what leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called, it's called... Why are you all looking at me because you're presenting? Hmm. Anyway, the poem's called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little un unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She hops back to her seat. That wasn't too bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Ah, uh, well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people would be way easier. I could put it on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Atsuki. I think the other way, I would think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so. Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about the about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. Might be hard, but I hope that you all you all have an idea of what's what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get into practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Geez, I should probably find some other poems to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. Makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's a big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's, for the, if it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Oh, ready to go, Sayori? Yep! Look at you two, always getting home together like that. Kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. Must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to, do, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Ricky, you have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, uh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to, I mean. Sayori so fumbled with their words. So let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> no, I would say Sayori. Sayori, you really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Eh? But, but, she's so beautiful and smart. Jeez, I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Rikisimo. You think about me so too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it. Wait, Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it? What? Oh, so she's... Okay. Sarah, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point of speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm. The conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. You know what will happen in that time. Wait, I'm going to save here, and I'm going to end it off right here. Hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys with another one. Bye, everybody. I love you guys. Bye. I know it's a lot of reading. I'm sorry, guys. 
and I'm super tired, so I'm like falling asleep. So I gotta end this right now. I don't know if things happened so far, but I know things happen later. Things will happen very soon, I'm pretty sure. But I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in another one. Bye, everybody! I love you guys! Bye!